Hey everybody, it's Christian and welcome to this new video. In this short video, I'm going to be showing you how to add the VQFX to your topologies, how to download it, how to access it, how to upload it to your EVE and then start labbing. So without further ado, let's get to it. So in order to use the VQFX, we need to obviously download it first. So go to the support page to the support.juniper.net slash support slash downloads. And up here you simply type VQFX. And as you can see, the VQFX evaluation pops up immediately. So let's select that. In the next screen, you can select the version that you want to download. I'm interested now in the 22 version. And as you can see, the application media is already pre-configured for the KVM images. That makes it a lot easier for us because with EVE, we're using this KVM images. So as you can see, the PFE and the RE are already sitting here, ready to be downloaded. So let's go ahead and download them. One eternity later. The next thing that we need to do is we need to upload that to our EVNG server. So I usually use FileZilla, but feel free to use any software that you want. After going to FileZilla, as you can see, I'm still in the opt-unit lab add-on QEMU VQFX one. So let's go to the root folder where all your images should be stored. And let's go ahead, just refresh that. Get rid of that. And as you can see, we now have the PFE and the RE image. These are the images that we've just downloaded. So let's go ahead and create a new file. And depending on the name of the folder, Eve recognizes if this is a VQFX, a VMX, or any type of device that you have, as long as you're using the pre-configured templates. This video is using the pre-configured VQFX template, so VQFXRE dash version number and VQFX PFE dash version number is the naming scheme that you need to use. You can use a different custom template if you like, but again, that's not covered in this video. So this is the 20.2R1 and let's name it YouTube so that we recognize it later on. And this is the RE that we're doing now. So we're now going to the RE image and as you can see, the ending is already QCOW2, so we can leave it at that. And the name for the hard disk is hda.qcow2. This way, the QEMU in your EVE knows, okay, this is the hard drive for the RE that I need to use. Right click upload. And depending on the connection that you have to your server, mine is standing in a co-location, so it takes a bit longer. Um, yeah, but depending on the uh, speed, this might take some time. So let's give it some time to upload and then we're continuing with the PFE. Okay, so everything has been uploaded to your EVE now, so let's go ahead and delete the RE image because we already uploaded it. And as you can see, VQFXRE-20.1 R1 YouTube has now been uploaded. So let's go ahead, go to the opt unit lab add-ons QEMU folder again, and let's do the same with the PFE. We create a new folder and this time it's not called RE, but PFE. And again, we need to rename it to hda.qcow2. Very important. Right click upload. And now the PFE starting to get uploaded. So let's give it some time and then we're going to our EVE and adding the VQF access. One eternity later. So let's log into our EVE. And as you can see, I have a yeah, blank lab here with just an ISP network that is outside of the scope of this video. So let's go ahead and add an object, note, VQF for the VQFX. Let's start with the PFE. And as you can see, here's our file, the VQFX PFE for YouTube. Um, you can leave the rest. And we're going to do the same with the RE. So let's add an object. VQFXRE, also selecting our newly uploaded YouTube one. Again, don't change any of the settings. 
And now we have the RE and the PFE. And in order for the VQFX to work, we need to interconnect them. And that is done via a special link that's called the int link. Without connecting them via this int link, your VQFX will not be ready to operate. It won't show any interfaces. And that is one of the mistakes I've seen quite often. Um, always make sure that you leave this int link alone. And also there is an EM interface on your VQFX inside the config. It's got an address pre-configured. And especially if you're deleting the config, make sure this part stays in the config. Otherwise the communication between your RE and your PFE will break. And then your VQFX will no longer work. It won't show any interfaces and it won't be operational anymore. Very important. So now we can go ahead and simply ignore this PFE because everything that we need to do on this level, well, we've already done it. We've interconnected it and the rest is done with this RE image here. So if we want to connect it to anything, we simply collect the RE. And as you can see, you now have all your XE interfaces that you can select um, and start labbing. So let's go ahead and select the XE000 here. Just an example. And then you can simply start the selected ones. And the VQFX is a quite heavy machine, so give it some time, especially during the first boot. It can take a significant amount of time. Don't get frustrated. Um, that's why I always recommend you to have a very powerful server with a lot of CPU cores, because the VQFX is really, really heavy. You can do almost anything with it, but it comes at a cost. You, can, you can't usually run it on your laptop. So yeah, now just wait for it to boot and then you're ready to lab and you can add as many nodes as you like, as long as your server resources are available. I hope this video helped you on your quest to build an awesome Juniper lab. And uh, if it helped you, please leave a thumbs up. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos. And if you like these type of videos, feel free to leave a comment in the section. It helps me a lot to yeah, basically see if this is the type of videos that you want to see or if it's too short or if it's too long. Um, just let me know. Thank you very much and see you next time.